Number one, they're easier to tie than a four in hand. Number two, they used to cost less than a, a long uh, tie. Number three, you don't, uh, if you spill gravy when you're eating, it goes on your shirt, if, generally, if you have on a bow tie, and you have gotta wash your shirt anyway, you don't have to wash your tie. So those are some of the reasons I wear a bow tie. I went to a kindergarten out in the West End called Miss Withers School. Then I went to St. Christopher's School. I went away to a boarding school in Alexandria called the Episcopal High School. And then I went to the University of Virginia. And that's my formal education. I'm not sure much of it took. I had jobs during school because in the summertime, I had to stay in Richmond most summers in high school and uh, when I was in college because I always failed whatever math course I was taking. And so I had to take them over in the summertime. My father, who worked at the newspaper, would give me a job and work in the mailing room, which is where the papers come up from the press. And uh, then I worked uh, several summers as a relief circulation district man. And my first, first job that I got paid for after I got out of college was when I joined the Marine Corps and spent a couple of years with them. After that, uh, I went to law school for a year and found that the most boring year I had spent yet in my life, so I, I left that and went to work in the newspaper business in 1963, full time, and I, that's what I've been doing for the last 40 years. He uh, approaches his his role here with a, uh, a combination of determination and humor, and as a result, he keeps strong perspective. Of course, it's fairly easy to find people smarter than I am, because most of them are. But if you go ahead and get the right ones and make sure the chemistry works, it's amazing what they can accomplish. And sometimes you get the credit for the work that they've done. Stewart has, will strike anybody as being a very courteous person. He always defers to others going through doorways. He makes sure that you cross the street in the safest position. And when I first came here, he and I went to lunch with his father on several occasions. His father liked to drive. Stewart would almost manhandle me into the front seat to make sure I sat up there. And I thought this was one more example of Stewart's courteousness. I found out he was absolutely scared to death of the way his father drove, and he wanted to be sure to be in the back seat in case anything happened. Newspapers as a product or a service have been in their death throes since, since before I was born. When radio first came on the scene, they said, well, radio is instantaneous. You can get all the news and information you need. You don't have to pay for the product. It's free over the air, paid for by advertisers. And the same thing was said when television came along in the 50s. And the same thing has been said when uh, the internet came along. I forget what year Al Gore invented it, but uh, they've been predicting that uh, we were in our death throes at least for 60, 70 years. I don't think that's true. And I think that our franchise as newspaper people is to make sure that we get the news and the information from the people in our local communities and present it to the others who don't know it. And we really don't care what the medium is, if it's newspapers or if it's television or if it's the internet or the ethernet or some little chip you put in your head and we beam stuff to you. Any of those things will work. But I think the daily newspaper will be around for a long time because the feel of reading that paper and the ease of looking at it and turning to whatever you want to and turning back to whatever you want to, it's a very pleasing experience except for the ink that sometimes comes off on your hand.